Magnus, in a fragmented world, how can Christians be bridge builders? Thank you for, for this question. Uh, I think it's at the heart of our uh, our identity and our being is to be reconciled. Or people who will work for reconciliation, reaching out to those who normally would be living in a, f a fractitious relationships, uh, either with us or with others. And so we don't only have the responsibility to uh, live a life that doesn't build walls and break down relationships with others, but we also have the responsibility of actually reaching to those who already have fallen out with each other to build a new way of connecting in a new relationship. How do we do that? Uh, the way we do that first is we need to be reconciled ourselves. So at the heart of it is uh, reconciliation, reconciliation to God. Uh, one of my driving chapters in New Testament is 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, where it speaks about us being uh, ambassadors of Christ, ambassadors of reconciliation. That's the whole context of that ambassadorial role that we have. We need to be people who will uh, be first reconciled to God because that's the call on our life. You be right with God, you allow Jesus to break the barriers that exist between you and the between God and then you will have the capacity and ability and understanding and the connection with the source of peace and then you're able to carry it to others so that's the first step I need to be reconciled to God and I believe in my own walk in life and with God that that is only possible through Jesus Christ the second step that we need to do is to live a life of justice that we live the life of justice ourselves so justice justice because reconciliation without justice never happens so we need to be able to reach out for anywhere where there is injustice and challenge the injustice but with the uh, ways of truth with the ways of peace with the ways of respect and honor I need to honor everyone who's standing in a way that is even causing injustice. I need to still honor them as people made in the image of God. And when I do that, I'm able to engage with them on a different level altogether. How do you engage with, with people who are, if you like, causing injustice or perpetuating it? Uh, first is to hear the story. What is your story? What is causing you to do what you're doing? And if you scratch beneath the surface, anyone who is doing, most of the people who are doing stuff like this, they're, they're coming to it because they're fearful and they're propagating blame game. And then you need to untangle fear and blame and begin to see, uh, encourage them to see the other as a human being of equal value to who they are. It's, it's understanding the immense value that each of us have. And I cannot afford not to give that to even my opponent, for those who are living a life of injustice. I need to uh, still treat them with that highest honor to encourage them to see the honor that God bestowed in others. So I need to uh, see injustice, to call it out, but engage with people doing it still as human be beings loved by God and honored human beings. And the third one is with them and with others to work ways of coming back from the edge and from the sides of the room to the middle of the room. So we can chat, we can dance around each other, we can maneuver around each other and find solutions together. Um, I love the concept of loving your enemy and a sentence I've been referring to in the seminar I've taken today I can't remember who, where I first heard it uh, and it says this the only way you can win against your enemy is to make him your friend and I'm out reaching to make every potential enemy as a friend because that's the only way we can win if I subdue my enemy he still is my enemy I haven't won but if he becomes my friend there is a different way of being for both of us. Thank you, Manus. Thank you.